Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Marjorie. If you're not new here, my name is still Marjorie. And this is Marjorie Made. It is a channel mostly about cross stitch, but sometimes I talk about other things. Today is just gonna be a lot and lot and lot of cross stitch. Yeah, this is going to be my March wrap up and I've got a lot to show y'all. I did a March whip bracket type of thing for um for March it was really really fun I got so much done I can't wait to go over all of that with y'all so without further ado let's jump in so I do have some starts to show y'all today um I know that I had said I was gonna do limited starts for 2024 which I'm doing pretty good okay I think I've only started like four things so far this year which for me that's great um if you're new here <laughs> I like to start things so anyway I had a couple of new starts but I'm really excited about them and I'm excited to show y'all so the first I'll show y'all is Cross Stitch Makes Everything okay -er. This is by Lucy Beam. Um, I started this with a couple of the girlies for Bridgen's birthday. So um, I was trying to hold off, but then everyone's projects just like looked really cute and I got FOMO. So I did like a, a stash conversion for everything. Um, I do have egregious hoop marks on this so please ignore that um i'm stitching this on 36 count i believe this is dusty cottage by be stitch me here's this for you close up i just got some words in so i got 11.9 percent of the way in on this so i'm above 10 percent which that's Kind of my goal is like any new start, I want to get it to 10% almost immediately. Um, that's not always the case, but you know, last year I would get really excited. I would start something, put like 50 to 100, 200 stitches in it, and then leave it for months and months at a time. So I'm trying to be a little bit more conscious about what I'm starting and like being able to put enough effort um, or not necessarily effort, but like have enough time to put it on it when I start it to get it pretty much to 10%. So I've, I've already got that going for me. Um, I probably won't go over my conversion now because I mean, all I have right now is a blue, but um, I'll be sure to show the full colors whenever I get a little bit more work on it and get some of those colors actually in it. But I was able to just like cut a scrap use some you know stash over dods and start that for Bridget's birthday so the next start i have to show y'all is an impulse start i will say um recently i have started watching which they're new so pretty much as soon as they put out a video i've been watching the hathaway stitchers and they are hilarious I am obsessed with them I love like every time their video comes on my like YouTube homepage I'm immediately watching it like I just love them so much um, amazing projects amazing stitching just and they're just such a joy like I was like belly laughing at some of their videos so anyway Amity one of the sisters has um released some of her patterns i did see this pattern in her i want to say finish in their finish parade um and i was like oh my gosh that's like so cute you know like i was obsessed with it um and she said she had designed it whatever um so she actually started an etsy and released the pattern and me and cameron and bridgen i believe all started it so, I know Cameron did for a fact. I don't know if Bridget has started it or not, but we all plan to, I'm pretty sure, because this project, it's beautiful. Anyway, I don't know if I said, but it's called My Flowers um, by Boomerang Stitches. I'm obsessed, okay? I have a tiny start, y'all. Okay, don't judge me. I know I just said that I like to get a lot of work in on my projects when I start them. Um... This one hasn't gotten the love yet. I just started this on March 18th, which 
Is it April 1st? Yes. Are we gonna talk about that? No. So, anyway, I, <laughs> I am 2.7% done on this. Um, I'm doing just like a, this is gonna be like a stash buster for me. So I just have this like gray Ada. Do I know what count it is? No. Do I know where I got it? No. I sure don't. Um, so I just started on that center flower. And again, I am just pulling like some stash DMC. I didn't have the called for, so I just picked something else. But I can go over that a little bit more once I get some more colors in on it. But I want to say this is a 14 count because this is a pretty big piece of fabric. Um... Yeah, it's probably like a 14 or 16 count, just like Heather Gray Ada. Yeah, this is going in my whip bucket for April because I definitely want to work on this more um, and get a decent chunk done. Um, Amity also has this really freaking cool like Jaws shark like Christmas pattern. It is gorgeous. Like it's incredible. And when she showed that in their finished parade and she said she designed it, I was like, what? Incredibly talented. She has the vision. Like, I just can't explain it. There, she is amazing. And Erin is also amazing. So go check them out if you haven't watched them already. Because you're missing out. You're missing out. So now I'm going to go over... The March whip bracket that I did. Um, actually, I'll wait to post the the picture of the bracket later. Um, I don't want to spoil anything. <laughs> um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from least amount of stitches to most. And kind of go over the... Um, just like the overall like projects and where they stand and how much work they got. But I will say for my whip bracket specifically there were some projects I worked on outside of that um but I'll talk about those later um for my March whip bracket I stitched 36 hours and was able to get 7,800 stitches done in that time which I thought was like really cool um it also gave me some perspective uh depending on the project I could get anywhere from like 200 250 um on average 200 to 250 stitches done in an hour so that kind of gave me some perspective which was good to have because now I'm looking at new starts and stitch counts and you know telling myself you know like doing the math like it'll take me this amount of time roughly to finish this project and it is a wake-up call because I am a little delusional when it comes to oh that's just that's small I could knock that out no you can't who told you that? <laughs> like, so anyway, it's it was a really fun and exciting experiment. Essentially, um, I would set an hour timer. I would work on a project um, for a certain amount of time. I think the first bracket was two hours each. So each project got two hours. And the project with the most amount of stitches done in that time would win in that little matchup. And so that's kind of how I did my bracket. I did it by stitches. I know some creators will let, you know, Instagram vote or, you know, they, their metrics are a little bit different, um, but that's how I did mine. So I just wanted to give you all that context. So the first project I have to show you all, this is Coffee and Eggs by The Artsy Housewife. Um, I am stitching this on 18 count Legacy Ada. Coffee and Eggs got two hours and I was able to stitch 433 stitches on it in those two hours and excuse all the hanging threads I need to bust out my sewing machine and just like zigzag stitch all these edges because they are awful so sorry about that and this is where she's looking now I filled in I didn't even fill in the teacup what was I doing anyway <laughs> I don't really remember what all I did but I know I started that little well, this little guy down here. This was my birthday start um, in 2023. And I love it, but it's almost like I love it too much to work on it. I know that doesn't make any sense to anyone who's reasonable. But if you're unreasonable like I am, you know what I'm talking about. Like, 
there's some projects that you just love so much and you don't you don't want to stitch them i think it's because i don't want it to be over i don't know or i'm just you know have too many whips that could be that could be another part but we're not going to talk about it okay anyway she's gorgeous she's stunning um definitely want to work on this again soon this kind of like sparked my joy for this project again um the colors are fantastic the artsy housewife does not miss and I just, I just love it. I just love it. She'll come up again later though. Don't you worry. So the next project I have to show y'all is Floral Dreams. This is by Barbara Anna. I'm doing this on 25 count Pacific Metallic. Yeah, I was right. Pacific Metallic Lugana. <laughs> um, this is opalescent and um, I worked on this for, again, two hours, but I also got 433 stitches on it. So that's really interesting. Um, and I am 84% done with this, y'all. She's gorgeous. I kind of wanted this one to win so I could like maybe finish it. I kind of wanted to finish in March, but you know, that's not how the bracket worked out. And I did have a thought in the back of my head where I'm like, I could really slow down on my other projects so I, the ones that I want to win will win. But, you know, for the sake of fairness, I tried to do everything at the same pace. And sometimes it was literally like two or three stitches between the winners. So, I absolutely love this. Um, I kind of want to save this to be my stitch con finish. I think I have like 500 stitches left on it. And it would be really cool to like finish this at StitchCon, get to ring the bell. But we'll see. I might, I might get a bug and stitch on it and finish it. Cause like now I just have to finish like the flowers up here and then we're done. So it is feeling very springy to say the least, but we'll just, we'll see. But yeah, so this was um, a project that was out in the first round, unfortunately. The next project I have to show y'all is the Black Butterfly Sampler by The Shaded Stitchery. Um, this was actually Bridget's birthday start last year <laughs> and I'm still not done, but that's okay. Um, I worked on this for two hours and got 439 stitches done. And this is just done on like a random mystery. I want to say 14 count Ada with just a stash, um, I think it was a color in cotton. So I think I pretty much just worked on that, maybe finished up, up there. So I'm almost done with this. Um, according to my notion, I'm 75.5% done. I just have to finish, you know, this other side of this butterfly and there's another one right there and then some back stitching. So, I have this on my list to finish this year. Next up is going to be Strawberry Harvest. This is by Cottage Garden. I can't ever say this. Cottage Garden Samplings. Um, I worked on this for two hours and was able to get 428 stitches done in that time. Um, this is going to look like a lot more than that because it is um this ended up being my second half of march's pick a whip so i will be showing you progress from both the march whip bracket and pick a whip um i don't know total how much i got done because i don't i don't normally track that um outside of whip brackets like i don't keep track of how many hours or how many stitches um but anyway Here's how this is looking. I'm doing this on a 32 count feldspar by Picture This Plus. Um, so as you can see, I came up and did the pink in this bird. I did fill in some of this, I do believe. Um, and then I started working on this green border. So it actually looks like a bird now, which is really cool. Um, and the pickle whip prompt was a stitch on a project with food or fruit. So there's like a huge strawberry down here, but I just did a little one up here so that it would, it would show up for the challenge, you know? This is so stinking cute. I have plans to work on this in June, but 
I'm not going to tell you all about that just yet. So stick around if you want to know. Um, not in today's video because you just have to wait. Let the suspense be held, you know? The next project I have to show y'all is so exciting. I fell in love with this project in March. I'm just, I don't know. I'm just taken aback by it. Um, this is Flower Power by Ink Circles. I am doing a color conversion. And um, so the colors are what make up the lesbian pride flag. So the purples and the oranges and the white. It's just, it's a gorgeous, like, it's just so pretty. It's a gorgeous flag. In my opinion, it's my favorite, but I am biased because of the colors and, you know, the obvious. Um, <laughs> anyway, this is stitched on 16 count chalkboard black Ada. Uh, this won the first bracket. So um, I worked on this for four hours and was able to get 868 stitches done in that amount of time. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready for this? Oh, are you joking? So I started in the center with like the darkest orange. This is the next orange, the next orange. And then we have the light purple, medium purple, dark purple, and then there's the white. Um, I wanted to try and get every color in on this just so I can like show you guys the vision because um, I don't really have like a mock-up of this. I'm kind of just like winging it. <laughs> so I wanted to get all these colors in just to be able to see them and to be able to show you all the vision. But can we talk about how absolutely stunning this is? I fell in love with this project. Oh, it is so beautiful. And so, you know, if you've ever done an ink circles, this um, is one of their mandala patterns. So each quadrant is mirrored. So it's the same all the way around. So I think I'm gonna work on getting this quadrant completed um, and then moving to a different one instead of working from the center all the way out, if that makes sense. I really just wanted to see all these colors put together. Um, and this is also gonna be helpful for like planning where the colors go because if I can map it out in this quadrant, then I can, you know, copy that when I move around. So beautiful, stunning. I do have a picture of the flosses together on my original post on Instagram. Um, but if you're having a hard time finding that or you just want me to send you my conversion, let me know. Or um, if you just want to see a picture of it all together. I love this. I love this. I think I might, and don't quote me because, you know, I just say things and then go back on it a week later. Um, I do plan... And I'll go over this in hopes and dreams, but I do plan to do a motif a week project. Um, this is not it right now, but I think maybe um, in a couple of months I might rotate out and make this uh, my motif a week project. Because these, I essentially was able to get like one full one an hour. Um, you know, that wasn't always the case, but I'm pretty sure like this took me like an hour um, filling out that, or maybe that one, I don't know, anyway, absolutely stunning, I could just look at this in the, in my, on my screen all day, okay, enough of this, this is Flower Power, um, by Ink Circles, oh, I am at 22% on that right now, so that's cool, pretty sure this was on my 10 to 10 by 10 challenge, and I was able to knock that out, um, during my March Whip Bracket challenge, so that was cool, Next up, we have the Bonker Sal. This is by Barbara Anna. Um, this one also was the winner of the first round, so it moved on to the next. I worked on this for four hours and got 905 stitches done. Um, this is my oldest whip currently, and my goal was to finish it. That didn't happen in March because of, you know, just the way the bracket worked. Um, so... I do plan to work on this in April to try and get it finished. Um, I'm at 75.9%. I think I can do it. Um, and this is done on 28 count Whisper Lugana. So I was able just to work up, get some of her face and her hair done. It's crazy because it doesn't look like I did almost a thousand stitches on this. 
but there's just so much detail that goes into her projects and I just absolutely love it. Oh, she's gorgeous. So yeah, keep an eye out. Hopefully, fingers crossed, this will be finished in April. Okay, the next project is near and dear to my heart. Um, I lovingly refer to this as the Pickle Whip. Um, I think because of this project and me talking about my love for pickles, it's now like part of my brand. <laughs> I'm now known as like the Pickle Girl, which I love. Okay, don't get me wrong. I am a Pickle Girl down to my bones, okay? Um, anyway, so this project got all the way to round three. So I worked on this for seven hours. I was able to get 1,472 stitches. Ah! I'm obsessed. Okay, I'm at 48.7% on my beautiful, lovely Pickle Whip. This is done on 28 count neutral Lugana. I don't really know. That's not the name. It's just like a tan Lugana. But are you kidding? Are you joking? And are you lying? It looks so good. Oh my gosh. I worked, you know, all over here. I got like the house or garden or whatever finished up. Um, that tree. It honestly has like a shadow over here. I didn't even do that on purpose. I'm gonna be for real with y'all. That was just the way the um, the variegation and the floss was working and I let it work. She's working overtime to be honest because the dimension in this is gorgeous. It's all just so amazing. It's just amazing. And I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. So like I said, I don't know if I, well, I don't know if I said it, but I'm 48.7% complete. So I'm almost at halfway. Couldn't be happier. I love this so much. I kind of want to finish it this year. Um, when, I don't know. I have a lot of finishes um, on my to-do list. But it's just, it's just beautiful. And I love it. And it's just so quirky and fun. Ugh. So I'm really glad it won as, you know, as many rounds as it did because it got to the final round, which is, is really great. So this is, I didn't even tell y'all what the actual name of this is. <laughs> this is Harvest Season Cucumbers. This is by Owl Forest Embroidery um, with my own fancy floss conversion that I just, um, I made up. I made it all up. Gorgeous. Last but not least, y'all, I am so shocked this project ended up being the overall winner, but I was flying through it. I don't know if it was the blocks of color. I have no idea what made this project fly by, but I was doing so many more stitches on this than anything else, like consistently through the whole thing. I mean, obviously, because it won, but you know, um... This is a study in pink by the Artsy Housewife. This was my leap day start for this year. So I started it on the 29th of February. Um, I would also like to show off, if I may, um, Jess, Miss Jess at Como Stitches did the thing with this bag. Okay, I am on like a low buy this year. Like I'm trying to do my best not to purchase things. Um, bags included, but when I saw this, I was like, immediately, like, I, I have to have it. This beautiful, like, dark teal that matches perfectly. Ugh, my heart. Okay. Be still my aching soul. This is gorgeous. So, obviously, I bought it. I mean, spoiler alert, if you haven't caught on. <laughs> anyway, um, I just had to show that off because... The quality of her bags are just amazing. The prints and the fabric she chooses, amazing. Um, also, spoiler alert, I did buy another Como Stitches bag. Because um, she's incredible. Like, she's amazing and she's wonderful and she's so nice. She's amazing. So, she posted on her Instagram story this project folder. It was a custom project folder that she made 
but the fabric was so like it was giving like Lisa Frank but like weird okay but bright colors it had like these butterflies and moths on it and I immediately am like I love that fabric turns out it's tulip pink and there are these like eyeballs in the butterfly wings. Like it is just, the, it was the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. Okay. So I was just telling her how cool it was. And she was like, um, I have some extra fabric if you want a bag. I said, yes, and I will. And I will. And I did. So she sent over the private listing on Etsy, which was like kind of fancy. I was like, this is exclusive. It's a private listing. <laughs> anyway, so I am waiting for that bag to come in the mail couldn't be more excited it should be here this week and i will cry maybe i'll, I'll keep you updated so without further ado um, i'm doing this on 18 count bramble ada um i believe that's picture this plus and um i am 24.2 percent done yeah and can we just take a moment take a moment this is so freaking pretty. It's so freaking pretty. I'm like hoping and praying the lighting is good. It's a little gloomy outside today, but. Anywho, she's so pretty. I did not expect to get this far. I, you know, I started a leap day start thinking it was gonna be cute and fun. I was gonna get to 10% call it a day. Um, no, I did so many stitches on this. I will say, um, my colors are a little bit darker than the, um, than the, like, cover image. But I think it looks great. I think she looks incredible. I did sub out, it calls for, I want to say, classic color works and then a couple of weeks. So, for the weeks, I just went to my LNS and found the closest um, alternative. So, um, the main, like, pink color over here is a lot darker, but I honestly love it. I think it looks incredible. And, you know, like, the, the nature of hand-dyed and, like, variegated floss, you're not always going to get the same thing every time. So... But I'm loving it. I don't even care. Just to recap, a study in pink ended up being the the winner. Um, I was wanting the winner to be something I could finish. But again, that's just not really how that worked out. Which is fine. I'm so glad I got as much work on that as I was able to. And it really is so much fun. Like, it's a beautiful project. And I just can't wait to get more work on it. Um, whenever that may be. Next up is going to be my Full Moon Sal. Um, this is Sarah Moon 1791 by um, Stitchy Box Samplers, I believe. Um, I was able to get 260 stitches on this. I only worked on it one day for the Full Moon, um, which is normally about how much, however much time I put into it. This is done on 40 count truffle. And I brought this guy down, that little thing. I worked a little bit on this little bird or whatever she's coming along slowly but surely but I only work on her once a month so these colors are gorgeous this is the um whimsy goth conversion done by Cameron at Cam the Stitcher she's phenomenal if you don't know who she is I don't know why you wouldn't but if you don't go check her out she's She's my soul sister um, in real life and in stitching. So I think I talk about her every video. So if you don't know who she is, I guess you're new here. So hi. Thank you for being here. After this, go watch Cam. <laughs> Another whip. I don't know where I put it. Um, I'll have to look for it after this, <laughs> after I get done recording. Um, but it's my full coverage. It's Bellamy. I was able to put a little bit over 200 stitches on that. I worked on it, I believe on the first for its whip birthday. I'm trying to work on things on their whip birthdays as much as I can. So I worked on that a little bit. And then I also have been working on Quaker Gardens. This is the round robin I'm doing with um, some of the girlies. 
and um, we're almost done. I have Cameron's project that I have to do my little motif on and then I'm sending it back to Cam. I know. Um, I got mine back in the mail. I'm going to wait to share that with y'all maybe in next video. Um, I really need to start working on my part to get it wrapped up because I, it's, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. I cannot wait to share that with y'all. Um, but I want to be able to put some of my work back into it before I just, I need to get it finished. I, I'm definitely going to work on it in April, but again, I might hold off on finish finishing it until StitchCon because how special would it be to finish the round robin with my besties like in real life? You know what I mean? So yeah, that's the round robin talk. Probably going to be the last kind of update for everyone else's projects, but I will definitely share mine with y'all once I'm able to put some work into it. Um, I did have a moment earlier, I think it was last week maybe, um, where I realized that there were some whips of mine that just I'm not vibing with for one reason or another. Um, and I'm about to go through those with y'all and just kind of let you know where I stand on those. So I did end up UFOing one project. It was the Haunted Library Mansion, I believe. Uh, the fabric was just not it. I was having to use three strands and it was just a nightmare to work with. It was really slow going and I and it was the fabric. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the pattern. It's just the fabric itself. So um, I decided to UFO that. I might restart it later. I might not. I haven't really decided. Um, I do really like that pattern. It's a pink haunted mansion. Like, are you joking? But it just like was sitting in a bag. I had no, you know, desire to work on it just because the process I know was going to be bad. So, um, I went ahead and gave my sister that fabric for her to use if she wants or throw away if she wants. Um, and I took it off my whip list. I did create a new category in my notion called UFO for now. Um, these are projects that I probably won't work on this year, maybe next year. Um, just projects that don't spark joy. Like I pulled a whole Marie Kondo and I took out every single one of my whips and looked at it and, you know, thought really hard about like my feelings on it and like if I was going to work on it or if it just wasn't my thing at this point in time. So... I moved five whips into the UFO for now category um, and I'll go over those with you real quick. The first one is Victorian Mansion. This is a dimensions kit that is honestly one of my oldest whips at this point. Um, definitely like the top five oldest whips I have. It's a dimensions kit. So if you've ever worked with one of those, you know that like the fabric is really scratchy and stiff. Um, the thread cards are kind of a mess. The patterns are really overwhelming. Um, yeah. And so the project itself looks really beautiful and the finished project is really beautiful. But for the sake of my stitching now and like how I, how I like to stitch, what I like to stitch, it's just not, it's just not it for me right now. I don't want to officially UFO it because I do feel like there is a possibility in the future of me wanting to work on that more and me putting it back on my whip list. Um, but for the sake of 2024, maybe even 2025, I don't know. Um, I put her in the closet. The next one I decided to UFO for now is going to be Dreaming Miss Claus. This is a Christmas Barbara Anna pattern. Um, I'm UFOing this for now because I have too many Christmas projects. Um, I don't have a ton, you know, I think I have like three or four maybe, um, but I just don't feel called to work on Christmas outside of Christmas. I am very seasonal when it comes to stitching, um, even like Christmas in July, I think I'm canceling this year. Um, I really liked it last year, but the projects I was working on weren't really that Christmassy. Like I did a couple other Barbara Anna Christmas projects and so I was stitching like weird birds and houses and, you know, the border on like the big, you know, the big Barbara Anna Christmas one. So I decided to UFO this one for now specifically until I finish up some of those other Christmas projects because 
I do feel more passionate about those. Like that, uh, Dreaming Miss Claus was when I started in 2022, I believe. So, you know, I haven't, I haven't gotten a lot of progress on it in these last two years. And so, you know, I just... I decided to take her off my whip list so I could focus on some of the other Christmas projects and get those wrapped up and get some of those finished. Um, and then I'll, I'll pick her back up. I think she's really cute. I, it's not that I don't like these projects or these patterns or, you know, it's not the, it's not the pattern's fault. It's a me, it's a me problem. I am the problem. So, <laughs> um, that was the reason behind that one. Next step is going to be a UFO for now slash restart. Um, I decided to UFO Wings of the Dove by Modern Folk Embroidery. Um, if you've been around, then you might know that that is my pink on pink project. So Miss Cameron, my baby girl, she made this gorgeous combo of fabric and floss. Like it is the most delicious thing I've ever seen in my life. And I'm obsessed with it. However, Wings of the Dove is huge. It's giant. Um, Modern Folk Embroidery, giant. Love them. Love them, but they're huge. Um, I have two Modern Folk Embroidery whips right now, and I looked at the pattern for Wings of the Dove, and, like, it's just, it's a lot. So, I decided what I'm going to do at some point. Again, this is a UFO for now, so I put it up um, until a later date is I'm going to stitch just the center part of Wings of the Dove instead of the full, like, embellished frame around it. Um, and I feel like that's going to cut out a lot of stitching. I only worked on this project for one day, maybe two days. You know, I think I have less than 500 stitches on it, and I started it last year. So I'm not pulling it out. I'm not working on it. Um, and then, like, looking at the pattern again, it was just... A very overwhelming and it's again a very gorgeous finished project but I think what I'm gonna do is simplify it and I'm gonna stitch the center part and cut out a whole lot of stitching and call today when that day will be I don't know yet <laughs> um, I will definitely restart it at some other point in time and um, enjoy it a lot more I think next up is one that I am kind of sad about but I get it, you know. Um, I decided to UFO for now. Rose Quaker by Weinberg, I believe. Uh, this is a project that I almost UFO'd once before. And then I pulled it for Pick a Whip and I worked on it and I fell in love with it again. Um, the reason that I am putting this one away for now is, again, it's just really big. It's a big Quaker and it's gorgeous. Like, it is so pretty. But with the state of my stitching and my whip list, it's not gonna get the attention it deserves. So I'm essentially just putting these projects away until they can get the attention and the progress that they deserve, you know, cause they're deserving, they're beautiful and they're gorgeous. But again, it's a me problem. So I decided to put this one up until maybe I finish one of my bigger samplers or, you know, have fewer larger whips. And that way I can like focus on that one and get progress on it and not just pick it up every six months and last but not least i have wicked dreams this is by barbara anna this was one of my halloween starts last year and you know you know me and my barbara anna i love love barbara anna um and that's kind of why i'm putting this one up for now i have so many halloween whips and again like i only really work on halloween stuff a couple times a, a year um, or a couple months a year, I should say. So, I'm planning to maybe pick that one back up once I finish a couple of Halloween projects. Or I finish a couple of my Barbara Annas. Um, I think right now I have three Barbara Annas going. Not including Wicked Dreams. So, I think I'm just going to wait a little bit. Finish up some of those and then pick this back up and that way again I can give it the attention that it deserves and I can actually get progress on it instead of trying to juggle all of this stuff at the same time. So that being said I am being a little bit more critical about what I'm starting. Um, I you know last year 
I sorted all the things because I wanted to sort all the things and I regret nothing. I have no regrets about anything that I've done um, or started or not started or UFO'd. Like I, you know, it's not that serious. It's cross stitch, which is serious, but like not in that way. You know what I'm saying? Um, if not, sorry. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it better than that. But um, yeah, I just, I have so many huge projects now that I, again, I'm being just more critical about what I plan to start and what I am starting. I want to finish things. Like that is kind of my headspace this year is like, I want to finish things. And you know, again, with the whole whip bracket, like I'm learning my pace and you know, I don't know how that compares to other people, but you know, I can get about, I'd say to like, I'd say 4,000 to like 7,000 stitches a month. Um, which is a very broad range. Yeah. But, um, as far as I've been tracking, which is in Jan like started January, 2024. Um, well, no, cause I, I switched to notion midway through half year, midway through half year, halfway through last year or mid year. <laughs> just combined that. Anyway, I've just been paying more attention to like how many stitches I can get in a month. And you know, that's going to fluctuate, you know, a lot depending on life so knowing that i can only get a certain number of stitches done in an hour or in a month you know depending on how many hours i have it's put things into perspective about how much i can realistically get done and i don't know it just it just got me thinking and got me wanting to prioritize things and get progress on big things but also it is encouraging to finish something it is encouraging to pick up a smaller project and finish it. So I'm definitely trying to start things on the smaller side and ones that I can finish, you know, relatively soon or quickly. Um, not necessarily soon because some of these new starts, I don't have a plan to finish because I'm prioritizing other things, but essentially I'm just trying to like figure it out. 2024 is really my year of figuring it out. I, was gonna do whip go I decided not to um I did the whip bracket situation I'm trying to do like categories like I had like a top 12 priority list um that I'm kind of straying from you know like I I think 2024 is going to be my year of just figuring out what works for me I'm gonna change things I'm gonna switch things whether that's monthly whether you know I'm just gonna figure it out I'm gonna experiment, I'm gonna do fun things, I'm gonna stitch, I'm gonna have fun. I'm gonna have fun. Um, but again, a part of that is just learning what works for me. Some people have methods that work for them. I'm still figuring that out. So, if you're, you know, if you've been here and you've stuck around for all of that, thank you for being patient with me and for me saying a lot of things and then changing those things and then going back and you know but that's life and that's me like to be completely honest I'm very much I adapt I change things to make them work for me I don't change me to work for things so uh yeah enough ramblings y'all I just I could go on and on I've been recording for so long <laughs> and I knew that this video was going to be a longer one and that's another thing I so far 2024 has been monthly recordings like I've been doing my monthly recaps which work for me in my brain um with like organizing things to like talk to y'all about it's never my intention to go a full month you know with March I wanted to do weekly updates who was she who did she think she was um obviously that didn't work out so I can't promise that I'm gonna record every two or three weeks but I'm gonna try my hardest to at least do monthly videos. Just cause I know that y'all enjoy my updates. I enjoy updating y'all. I love making these videos. I love chatting with y'all in the comments. I, you know, all that jazz. That being said, I'm going to rein it in and move on to hopes and dreams. So for April hopes and dreams, we're gonna be chill. Well, I say that. I need to finish Cam's round robin. I probably have like 500 stitches left on that. I need to finish that up like 
in the next couple of days. So that's going to be my priority for the next couple of days. And then for April overall, I really, 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 really want to finish the bonker sale. I, it's about time, you know, it's about time. Then I am going to do motif a week with the floral motif sampler. Motif a week, I am almost 100% sure is by Julian Stitches. Love her. Again, if you never watched her, what are you doing here? Go watch her. Love Julie. She's so sweet, incredible, just a beautiful human, a kind soul. Like you can just tell that she is just so kind. And anyway, she's doing motif a week. I'm stealing that and I'm doing motif a week on floor motif sampler. That was my birthday start in 2022. I believe so. Um, I need to get more progress on that, which is what we're doing by Motif a Week. Um, Cameron is also going to do Motif a Week with me, which is cool. I don't remember what project she picked. I want to say Consider the Lilies. I could be lying. I want to work on my round robin. At least get some of my portion done. Sorry y'all, I'm thirsty. I've been talking. I've been yakking for a long time. So to get some work done on my round robin. Not shooting to finish it. At least not in April. But we'll see. And then. Another thing I completely forgot about. Is Pick a Whip. The 1st through the 15th of April. Um, the prompt is Stitch on a Project with Words. So. This kind of led me down the rabbit hole. I decided to work on Needles Dance as my pick whip. This is what I have done. Just that little center part, you know, not much. Uh, this is Blue Moon by Zweigart, I believe. I kitted this up um, at the beginning of 2023. Um, in Denver, Colorado. So at that point I was still pretty new at cross stitch. So I just like got the call for, you know, whatever. And I, I do enjoy this fabric. It's not bad, but I mean, it's just a, a Navy's Zweigart, but I was, I was inspired by this. Again, this fabric is called blue moon. Um, but this is a be stitch me fabric. Are you joking? Okay, she is beauty, she's grace. She is the prom queen of navy fabric. Okay, uh, so I think I'm gonna restart it. Uh, Cameron and I were talking about this project uh, for Pick a Whip because I told her the Pick a Whip prompt. I haven't posted yet on Instagram, but I need to do that after this video. It's a busy day y'all, it's the April 1st. So anyway, I was talking to Cameron about this and she said some, like we were talking about fabric and I was going to look at my stash to see, you know, if there was something maybe I could send her. Well, then I found this and I completely forgot about it because I don't tend to work on fabric this color. Like I just don't really have anything um, that like initially comes to mind that would go on this. However, pulling this out, I was like, wait. I think I'm going to restart. It's a 36 count linen by Be Stitch Me. Um, it's the same like tone of blue. I mean, this obviously doesn't have any modeling. Um, but I just, I think this is what is going to be gorgeous. I, I really just, I'm going to have to do it. And I'll probably save this blue moon zweigart for something else like i'll put it in stash and maybe i'll use it for like a christmas ornament or something um i mean you never know so i'll definitely save it for something but i thought while you know i wasn't too far i can restart it these are the colors they're so beautiful gorgeous so for pick a whip number one I will be restarting Needles Dance on Blue Moon by Be Stitch Me. I'm really pumped about it. It honestly kind of feels like a new start. I'm kind of cheating. But technically it's not a new start because my whip number is not going up. But I'm cheating. 
and it's gonna feel like a new start, which is all that matters really. So stick around to see how that turns out. I also um, started in the middle originally because you know I got that fabric custom cut like you know the beginning of 2023 a year ago so I didn't remember how much margin I left so I started in the center but I think now I'm gonna start at the top and actually work on the words for pick a whip with words so there is that so now I'm gonna go over my gratitude section I know that um, in the last couple videos I haven't had it but I'm gonna go over that now and then I think We'll save books and crochet for next time. I don't really have much to talk about on that end, so I was too busy cross-stitching all March. <laughs> anyway, um, but my gratitude for today is going to be every mistake I've made and every lesson I've learned. In the grand scheme of things, that's what's gotten me here in my life, and that's what's made me grow and turn into the woman I am today. So, you know, I probably could have saved myself a lot of heartache and a lot of, you know, Pain and suffering, some would say, but everything is a learning experience or can be if that's what you make it. I don't believe everything happens for a reason. I think that some things don't have reasons. Sometimes bad things happen and sometimes people make mistakes and there's not really reasons for any of that. But nevertheless, I just took a moment today to think about really just every lesson I've learned in my life and you know, what's, what's led me here to where I am now in life and I'm in the best position I've ever been in in my life both you know on the relationship and career wise you know I'm you know living in a region I always wanted to live in and you know there's a lot of things that led up to this and you know some things I wish could be different but nevertheless we're here we're making the best of everything that we can and we're learning we're live laugh loving and learning <laughs> i think this is where i leave y'all uh thank you so much for being here thank you so much for watching and you know all of the support that y'all give me constantly it just it just fills my heart with so much joy um to be a part of this community and um to get to know y'all and let y'all into my life a little bit and then y'all let me into y'all's life sometimes and you know that's beautiful and i just i love y'all from the bottom of my heart you're beautiful, you're cared for, you're loved, you're important, like all of those things. Don't ever forget it. Um, and if you do, just let me know and I'll remind you. Uh, do something this week, this month, whenever it is until I see you. <laughs> do something that fills your cup, makes you happy, brings you joy. Um, whatever that looks like for you this week, which might be different from next week or last week. So listen to your body, listen to yourself, listen to your heart and cross stitch some stuff yeah <laughs> that's my new outro <laughs> all right anyway love y'all bye